Now we can take the flywheel off. There's also a plate on the back side uh, that we need to uh, keep as well and not forget to put on before we put the engine in. But the quickest way to get these off is with the impact. And since I got the impact fired up, I'm going to take the crank bolt off as well. Now we can bolt on our Harbor Freight special here, uh, engine stand. These are also M10 uh, by 1.5 and uh, these are I think 75 millimeters long. And now we can raise the engine up until it's high enough to slide the stand into it. And now we've got the engine on the stand. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of our friend here, PB Blaster, and spray it on the exhaust manifold nuts. Here's a look at that motor mount. That's pretty good. That's probably one of the worst ones I've ever seen. There's absolutely no rubber in between them. But you can see how they're made. If the rubber breaks, the engine's not going to flop out of there. Looks like this side's equally as impressive. Although I think there's a little bit of rubber left on the inside of this one. I'm going to loosen the dipstick tube. Now we can take this valve cover off. Take a look what's underneath there. Whenever you do anything like this, like when you bolt it down, it's a good idea to bolt it from the inside out. And when you take it apart, you unbolt it from the outside, work your way in. So this has two dabs of RTV on here, so it might be hard to get to come off a little bit. Whenever I take an engine apart, I like to kind of look and see if I see anything that was wrong with it. Uh, see any evidence of anything getting torn up or you know shavings inside there and this one doesn't look too bad I'll do this valve cover this side doesn't look too bad either notice that the Windsor blocks have individual caps that hold the cams on still PI head but no girdle there's usually girdles across here so to get the crank pulley off, you usually need a, a puller thing like this. Uh, this also works for steering wheels. If you don't have one, you can uh, usually rent them from uh, AutoZone or any of them parts stores. And I guess got a bunch of different bolts in here that I've used to pull other, uh, other cranks, crank pulleys off. And so you just got to find three bolts that thread into there. I'm going to take our bolt out. Make sure you pick, take the washer with it. That washer can sometimes stay in there because if it's been out before, there's probably been RTV in there to hold it in. So make sure you get the washer out. And that one feels like it, so I just need to get a couple more like it. And so I got three bolts here. And the way this goes on is you're gonna line these holes up, the slots with the three holes in the center. And if your bolts aren't this long, then uh, that's fine. It doesn't need to be out this long. These just happen to be that long. A bit of PB blaster down in there can't hurt. Once you got a few turns of the all, all the bolts in there evenly, now you can start screwing this down. And what this does, this is screwing in, hitting the crank, and then pulling back on uh, this portion. Let me get a wrench. And so now as I tighten this. The, crank pulley will start to come off. Now I'm going to take the water pump pulley off. The easiest way to get this off is with the impact, uh, but there's other ways you can hold this from turning if you don't have an impact. So I'm going to take the idler pulley off and the tensioner, and you can spin these and see if they make any noise. That one's making some noise, so it probably should be replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and take these off. Now we can go around and undo the timing chain cover bolts. And these ones up here are going to have studs on them. Uh, those are 18s. The rest are going to be uh, 13s. That one looks like 
18s down there as well. And then don't forget there's four oil pan bolts that go up into uh, the cover. All right, once you got all the bolts out, you want to go around and just double check that one's not so covered in oil that you couldn't see it. And don't forget the bottom four. I also like to unbolt or loosen up a couple of the oil pan on the way back. That way the oil pan will, will sag down a little bit when we go to pry this thing off. All right, let's see if I can get it by hand. So there's RTV up here where the uh, valve cover is. There's RTV here, RTV, RTV, or there should be. So it may not just come right off of there. Might need to use a little pry bar or a screwdriver if you got one. Be gentle with it though, it shouldn't take very much pressure. Once you got it off, it's also not a bad idea to keep everything that held it on there in the same bag. Okay, so now we can see inside here and I don't see anything that looks way out of place or anything. A lot of times these will be worn through or have lots of play on them. Uh, but the plastics, I mean the plastics look old but a little loose. And I take the crank reluctor wheel off of here. There's two different styles of these. This is the thicker one. Uh, there's a stamped steel one that comes on the one piece. This must have a two piece. Uh, but there's two different ones they are not interchangeable uh, Depending on what gear set you got on there. So we don't want to lose this All right, now I'm going to unbolt the pan and when you do this It's a good idea to keep the engine upright So if something did happen in their shavings and stuff like that inside the pan that they don't fall up uh, Inside the engine. So I like to take the oil pan off with the engine in the upright position Okay, so the pan's already loose, coming down, but uh, and there's no oil in it. Remember, we drained it earlier. Um, but uh, I like to leave two two uh, bolts in there so that they're just barely hanging in there. Uh, so I can undo those last and then lower it down. And I don't think there's going to be much in here. Unless we would have seen it when it drained out, but set it up to drain everything out of there. And we can watch for any. And when you put everything away, make sure you keep your uh, all your bolts in one bag. And you can see a little bit of glitter in there. All right, before we uh, take the oil filter adapter and rotate the engine, there's still coolant inside the block. So I'm going to try and get as much of that out. And if you look back on the driver's side, there's one of these little Allen. Uh, plugs that's where you drain the coolant out I like guess probably not gonna be too easy to get out but we'll see nope that guy ain't coming put some PV blaster on there and there's one on the other side but one on the other side is up towards the front also of note there's a W right here that's what tells you it's a, a Windsor block Yeah, the one on this side is back behind the motor mount, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Yeah, you can see the plug there. Now yeah, back over on the driver's side, while we're waiting to see if PB Blaster will do its job on the, uh, the drain plug there, I'll go ahead and take this oil filter off. Alright, yeah, I know we didn't give it much time. Let's see if that PB Blaster did anything. And the other thing we take off that we need to keep and go on the other engine is going to be the oil filter adapter, so we'll take that off. Yeah, that doesn't look good. 